what, what's the 80 20 rule mean to you? Uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, to me, the 80 20 rule is I think 100%. People are in, a, in an instant gratification world. Everybody thinks they're important. Whether they are or not, they think they're important. So I think everything has to be handled and done, but it doesn't have to be by you. So I think that right person, right seat is very, very important when you own a company. So what we used to do is we'd say, okay, we'd have 100 calls come in. 80 of them are stupid, right? How do I pay my rent? How do I? But they have to be answered. But it doesn't have to be answered by you being a property manager or whatever your role is in the company. Leverage that to a lower level position, right? Now, we all know the 80 Pareto's principle is 80, 80, 80% of your, you know, your money is made by 20% of the people and all those things. But I think that 80-20 rule is relevant. It's probably even more now, I would say, more 90-10 or, you know, but I, I think everything is important at different levels. I don't think anything is not important. It just may not be important for me to deal with. So I'm, I'm a big believer, you know, I've learned from my mentors, the using the word no, no, I'm not taking that call. Now I don't say no, I just look at other solutions to say, well, why don't you take the call? That's like me saying no, but I go, look, we're going to start routing the calls to you and you can handle that because that's now your job. That's me saying no, that's part of the 80, 20 rule. So that I can focus on the 20% that I can be the most productive and I have the best use of handling. Yeah, I think when you're building teams and you're growing an organization, you've got to be real careful with your time. I mean, Absolutely. I, I see so many people, so many really talented people, by the way, they spend all of their time with the wrong people. They're, they're trying to, like, I, I think it's really important that people understand you cannot make someone into somebody they do not want to become. People are going to be people. And if, if you're going to, you know, have a, have a life where you're dealing with people and you're recruiting and you're training, you're developing and you're growing leaders, some people just are not going to do the things that need to be done so that they can go to the next level. And so our job is, at least I've always felt like it was my job, almost like a, like a professional coach. And, and I always thought, like, I'm out there recruiting and looking for the right people. You know, there's going to be a lot of people we're going to bring in the organization through the time, but I want to find the right people, and I want to spend all my time. Like that, that one coach where you see that one player at that high school, and, man, you start recruiting them, and you're like, this kid's the right kid. And you, 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 you know, go and have dinner with the parents, and you recruit them, and you do everything, and you bring this, this, this stud in. That's what I am always looking for. And, and look, if he, de if he decides that he doesn't want to be that stud, if he decides he doesn't want to be that guy, well, then, hey, I'll just kind of, you know, stop spending a whole lot of time with him, maybe delegate his stuff out to somebody else and let somebody else train him so I can go focus my energy, my 20% of my life, finding those right people. Good, good stuff, though, man. Hey, what, what uh, let, let's talk about real estate. For briefly because you're into real estate and it's, it's your life and so tell us about your first big real estate deal that you're pretty proud of um i, I would say the first deal that i'm that i'm proud of i've got many that i'm not but we'll go with the ones that i am that's good um it was an apartment deal i did it was my first apartment in, uh, in here in houston texas i did with a and the reason i'm proud of it um it, you know it was a good deal we made money we sold it all that was good but it created a partnership with me and my business partner that allowed us to buy further real estate together. But we built a multi-million dollar business together. And we went, he and I went on a lifetime journey, basically, of becoming new people. So when I talk about mentors, Marshall, my business partner was right alongside of me the whole time. And it was because of that purchase that we met and we started this journey. And had I never purchased that property or gone and did that deal, probably would have never met him and probably wouldn't be here today. I'd probably be an employee flying an airplane. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's so, I, I think, you know, we all, I think we all have tracks in our lives that we don't know that we're following. And I think that was a track that was a, a it was a blessing for me because it, it's, it's given me the life of my dreams. I have the, I have the life that I love having and, and, because of decisions I made and saying yes to very scary, very unknown things and very, you know, doing things that I didn't want to do and I didn't feel comfortable and I still did them. 
Um, and because of that, I, I have the life that I love having. And, and I, I could thank him and, and, you know, obviously myself and other people uh, for taking me on this journey. And so what, what's, one of the, uh, what's one of the mistakes that you made along the way? How much time you got? Uh, I, I would say uh, the, the biggest mistake I made is I am a very, very aggressive, ready, shoot, aim kind of guy. I mean, if they say, hey, why don't we run up? I'm already running. Like, I'm already running. I don't even know if it's the right kill. I'm already going. I'm like, let's do this, you know? Um, and that's not always the best thing. And so the biggest mistake I had when I was started buying real estate after we sold the apartment complex is real estate and business has an interesting way of explaining to you without any discrimination or preconceived thoughts that you're not as smart as you think you are. And when it comes back, it comes back like a wrecking ball to clarify how smart you are or not when you make a mistake. Um, and so I, when I was purchasing real estate after we sold the apartment complex, I started buying a lot of properties with no goal. I had no end destination for buying these. People said they were good deals and I, I trusted them and I bought these deals. They were good deals. They just weren't good deals for me because I didn't have an end goal. And so there's something to be said about slowing down to speed up. And, and, and I think I... Uh, th there's some things that you need to have, I, I think in this business, especially, you know, there's no rule book that says, Hey, Steve, this is your manual for life. This is how you will be successful in real estate in Houston, Texas. That doesn't exist. You have to create your own. And if you don't create your own, nobody cares. Nobody cares if I go bankrupt or I, or I, I make a million dollars a year. Nobody cares. So I think the, the, the challenge is, is if, if you don't care and I tell the people that I coach, I go, look, I can't want it more than you. I can't do the work for you. If you don't care, I guarantee you, I'm not going to care because my life is fine. My life's not going to change. If you don't make those calls and you don't do those things, my life will not change tomorrow. I still will have a good life. You, I don't know how your life will be because you're not doing the work. So I'm a big believer in doing the work and doing what needs to be done. And, uh, and as far as the, um, you know, I wanted to get your take on uh, the the real estate ban or the the eviction ban that's going on because I heard you talk a little bit about that and I wanted to get your thoughts like, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it's I think it's big government getting in the way of of commerce. I, I really do. I think you know um, if you're going to do that, you got to make it fair for both sides. If you, if tenants don't have to pay rent, owners should not have to pay the mortgages. Unfortunately, the lobbyists don't think that way, and they're the ones who control government, essentially, not to get political. But um, so it, we don't we don't play in a fair system. But no one ever said life was fair. No one ever said that this industry was fair. I think that what's going to happen is is you are going to see a lot of people that did not set their businesses up correctly are going to get that wrecking ball coming through their life, and it, and it's going to happen. It's it's a it it is a it is an inevitable market correction that was delayed. So I think we are still going to see, I, I don't want to say it's a crash. I don't know. Um, but I do think just like, just like, look, we're never surprised when winter comes, right? When the seasons change and winter comes, we're not like, wow, this is odd. When there's a market correction and real estate changes, you shouldn't be surprised. Just like in any industry, it's going to change. It never stays the same. So I think all it did is it just prolonged the inevitable of this correction that's going to happen. It could have made it less. It could make it more. I don't think we know. So I don't think it's right, but you know, I, that's not my role. My role is to look at it and say, okay, is there a business strategy that I can capitalize on this? At the end of the day, is, it, is there a way for me to capitalize on this in business? And I think the answer is, is by educating yourself, being ready and being poised that when deals are prepared and you know what your goal is, that's when you take action. And that's, that's me. So the future of real estate, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, the next year, two years out, What's I think your, what would be, be your, your, your be like, gut? What's your gut? Yeah, I, my gut says it's not going to be like a balloon popping. It's going to be them just deflating air out of the balloon. I don't think the government is going to allow a crash given everything. And we've seen that the government is not afraid to pump money into an economy. And, and I think we'll see that. I think they're going to soften the blow. I, I don't think you'll hear about it. I don't think it'll be as cinematic as it was in 2008. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to correct because you can't keep it propped up forever. Um, I just think they're going to do everything they can to, to put band-aids on this, to, to, to let it re-correct on the backside without us seeing it. 
and, and I mean, it really, it comes down to interest rates. I mean, you know, they're, supposedly they were supposed to keep interest rates low until the end of 2022, but now they're saying they want to kind of bring that timeline a little bit closer. And so, do you, you know, I, I think that's the indicator. I, I have a feeling it that's going to be, if, if, if there is a little prick or a, there, there is going to be a bubble that's going to pop, it's going to be the interest rates. But if they lay down that hammer, again, your thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And I think, you know, there's 8 million owners in forbearance right now for their mortgages. There's 20 million to 30 million renters that are behind on their, more, on their rent. They're, you know, to, to assume that they're going to go ahead and pay their rent. I mean, what world do you live in? You're, you must be the mayor of fairyland. It's just not going to happen. So I think the reality is, is a lot of owners are going to be stuck with properties that they can't afford and that they're going to have to sell. And it's, it's price demand. It's, we're already seeing the market is not as astronomically, you know, in the other atmosphere like it was. It's starting to settle and, and it, it'll come down. So I think the interest rates is the beginning indicator of that happening. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Thank you for watching our short clips on Alonzo Academy. If you'd like to watch the next short clip, click here. If you'd like to watch the entire podcast, click here.